Hey everyone, welcome to the Maltinov's Movement. My name is Susana Lorenzo. I am a clinical psychologist and freediver from Portugal, and I'm the author of the scientific investigation, The Psychology of Freediving. Due to the current circumstances caused by the COVID-19 outbreak and thinking of all the freedivers and freediving enthusiasts all around the globe who are under quarantine just like me, I decided to create a project which is called Quarantine with a Freediver and which aims is to provide the freediving community with helpful content in order to promote positive mental health. So throughout this video, I will be sharing with you some useful mechanisms you can put into practice in order to cope with your emotions during this outbreak and during the time you're isolated. So we're obviously in the midst of a worldwide pandemic with cities and even entire countries shutting down. And some of us are even in areas that have already been affected by coronavirus. And all of us are watching the news and reading the headlines and we're all wondering what is going to happen next? What is our future going to be like? As we all know, quarantine and isolation are two of the preventive measures many countries have been trying to implement in order to control the current COVID-19 outbreak. And even though these two measures can play an important role in preventing the spread of infectious diseases, this can also have a considerable psychological impact on those who undergo it. And part of the reason for this is the impact that being isolated has on three key elements of our mental health, these being autonomy, competency, and connectedness. So being isolated leaves us frequently with the feeling that we have no control over the situation, that we are unable to perform our usual duties, and that we're also cut off from the rest of the world. So spending time in isolation can often be a very difficult experience. And another reason for this is because whenever there is some sort of change in our lives, we as humans need time to adapt. And whenever these changes are forced by a visible threat like COVID-19, coping with this disruption becomes even more difficult. So it is perfectly normal that throughout this time we start feeling anxiety, anger, sadness and even fear. Therefore, taking care of your mental health during this time is crucial even if the time you're living under quarantine is relatively brief. So here are some steps that can help mitigate the negative health effects of quarantine and isolation. Number one, stay informed but not overwhelmed. Okay, so throughout this phase, information is key and people have the need of being informed and of understanding the current situation. However, we're already experiencing a great fear around getting infected and infecting others, so we're already prone to catastrophic interpretation of events, and inaccurate information can exacerbate this. So in order to break this cycle, what you need to do is find trusted sources of information such as the World Health Organization and your local authorities and just stick to them for information because any rumors, myths and fake news around this topic will only increase your anxiety and your fear and by doing this you're already protecting yourself from unnecessary discomfort. Limiting your consumption of news may also be a good idea at this point, especially because repeatedly hearing about COVID-19 can be very upsetting. So you can do this by limiting the amount of updates that you search for or by taking breaks from watching the news or from social media. Number two, communicate and stay connected. During the time you're living in quarantine, it is very important that you keep in touch with your friends and your family, that you reach out to others on social media, and essentially that you keep communicating and connecting with others. Talking with people you care about is one of the best ways to reduce anxiety, boredom, and the sense of isolation. And besides that, talking to other people who are experiencing the same things as you're going through can provide a sense of community and union. Number three, establish routines. The disruption of our daily and normal routines can be one of the most difficult aspects of being in quarantine, so structure throughout this phase is going to be very, very important. If you're working from home, it might be helpful to structure your time as you would normally do on a regular workday. However, if you're not working, things can be a bit more challenging. Some of the distress of being quarantined is a consequence of boredom and frustration, so finding ways to keep yourself occupied and maintaining routines is crucial to overcome this monotony. However, you don't necessarily have to maintain a very, very strict routine, you just have to make up your own routine based on whatever works best for you. Just try to maintain a consistent sleep schedule by sticking to the same wake-up time and to the same bedtime. Try to maintain a healthy diet, get dressed, don't wear your pajamas all day. And number four, stay active. 
Okay, even though your quarantine may be relatively brief, staying active might help you feel a lot better. Fortunately, from exercise videos to online workout sessions or fitness apps, there are plenty of at-home workout ideas that can help you keep moving. Many freedivers have been sharing their workout routines on their social media as well as breathing and stretching exercises that can be useful and the Molchanov's movement, for instance, has been uploading on a daily basis. So luckily for the freediving community, there are a lot of ways that we can stay active and maintain our physical fitness. But staying active is not only about working out, and besides physical exercise, getting things done can actually provide a sense of purpose and competency. So make a plan, list some things you would like to accomplish, and then start checking out a few items off of your list every single day. Number five, relax. While staying active is very important, it is also crucial that you pace yourself between stressful tasks and take some time to rest and to engage in activities that you enjoy. This can be meditating, watching a movie, learning a new language, or working on that project you've been postponing so far. What matters here is to be creative, so make the most out of the reality that you're in right now instead of focusing on all the things that you can't do due to the current restrictions. Number six, help others. By supporting your friends and your family, you are promoting an environment of trust, empathy, and solidarity. Therefore, be supportive of people who are under greater stress right now, people who are worried about their loved ones, or people whose anxiety has been triggered by the current outbreak. You can do this by reassuring someone who's feeling stressed out or worried, by sharing good news and positive updates about the COVID-19 situation, such as the recovery rates, by suggesting someone activities to do indoors or by simply listening to that person. Lastly, number seven, coping with your emotions. Remind yourself that quarantine isn't forever. So it had a beginning, but it will also have an ending. And as you've previously dealt with other situations in your life, you will also be able to deal with this one. There are so many things outside our control right now, including how long this pandemic lasts, the future of our communities and how other people behave. And that's a tough thing to accept. And many of us respond by endlessly thinking over all the scenarios that could possibly happen. However, focusing on questions with unknowable answers and circumstances completely outside of our control only fuels anxiety, fear, and anger. So whenever you feel like you're getting caught up in the fear of what might happen, just try to shift your focus to things that you can actually control. Although keeping a positive attitude is essential, it is also crucial that you speak about your needs and that you ask for help whenever it is necessary. So make sure that you have everything you need in order to feel safe, secure, and comfortable during this time. And talk to other people about your concerns or about how you're feeling. Don't use drugs, alcohol, or smoking to cope with your emotions during this time. And if you feel like your anxiety, your fear, your stress, and your panic are difficult to manage, please consider consider seeking professional help. Okay, so over the next few weeks, I will be talking to some freedivers in order to understand how they are coping with this whole situation. And throughout these conversations, we will be exploring some themes such as useful workout routines to do indoors, useful exercises like breathing exercises and stretching exercises, other ways you can maintain your physical fitness and obviously helpful strategies and mechanisms that you can use in order to manage your emotions during this stressful experience. So so if you don't want to miss out on any of these videos, all you have to do is go to facebook.com slash the psychology of freediving and follow the page. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.